Welcome to the video today. We're going to look at templates and why they're so handy, so powerful, and can save you so much, so many headaches and so much time. Um, really important to set up a template as when you open your DAW, you don't want to be uh, confronted with technical issues. You want to create music and you want to have fun doing it. So that's what we're looking at today. Uh, a couple notes first. Uh, thank you to everybody that's supporting the channel. It allows me to try new libraries to experiment and get you some information. And uh, anybody who's supporting the channel in whatever form that is, Patreon or joining the channel, or just uh, watching the videos and liking and commenting, it helps a lot and it's important to do because I do not take uh, money for any of my... Uh, uh, tutorials or videos from companies and I try to stay unbiased and so it's just me doing this so when you do that you're really truly supporting the channel and um, a few other things to comment uh, the community tab on my uh, uh, YouTube is very important because um, just this last couple of weeks with the sales and the Christmas sales uh, Sometimes I can give notifications on where to get free libraries, and um, I generally like to keep the community tab, uh, community tab updated regularly uh, with information and helpful other channels, too. So it's worth uh, looking at. And uh, what else do I need to say? Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's been a lot going on with the Christmas sales and so much going on as far as new libraries, new technology. What a year it's been. Um, I'm thinking of doing a video on just really the state of the art of where we're at with uh, technology and all these new libraries. But uh, for now, let's get into the video and take a look at uh, templates and why they're so important. So templates take a while to set up, but uh, literally you just do it once and uh, from then on you're good to go. You just open your project and all that hard work is done once and not 50 or 60 or 100 times over. Which is really great because when you open your DAW and you want to create music or you want to sketch some ideas or you just want to have fun listening to these beautiful instruments, um, you don't want technical issues to get in the way and quickly rob you of your day of uh, making music and enjoying this. So really is quite important to set up a system where you negate all those issues that cause you hassles and um, really let the music flow. So let's just listen to a little piece I put together using this template. It was really enjoyable to do. I must say it's one of the most enjoyable uh, little snapshots of an idea I've done in a while and um, because of just taking the time to work out the issues and then fix them, and once they're fixed, uh, you can literally open your project and hit play.
So in this first part about templates, um, we're just going to talk about what, what's in my template and then there'll be other videos explaining and showing how I'll start a session completely from scratch, starting with the chords, a uh, musical idea, and then just adding one track at a time. And you'll see how this template um, allows you to work so much quicker and that you could set up your own style of template and really get those advantages. So let's look at what exactly is in this. So when I open my project and the template is before me, I don't have hundreds of different tracks of instruments open, kind of overwhelming, where do I start? I have everything in folders so that if I do decide on a particular day to just do orchestral music, I know where those folders are and to, uh, which folders to open up. Same thing with contemporary music, I know where to go. That way you don't have hundreds of tracks in front of you and you're scrolling through trying to find certain instruments, even though that happens a lot anyway. At least with folders, you have that somewhat under control. And it's really easy to create a folder track in Cubase. You just add folder track and then select whatever you want in it and drag it into there. It's just really basic. So that's the first step. Using folder tracks is going to keep things tidy and um, a good place to start. All right, so now let's talk about every track in this template and what uh, its use is. Uh, at the top, we have Session Bus, which is really just a bus that all my instruments go through um, to unify the space and um, some settings for each track. So I have a Pro R. Uh, reverb on there and the Sheps Omni Channel and uh, I've said I've mentioned this before in a couple of videos a long time ago uh, the Sheps Omni Channel highly regarded by many as just a really great way to um, give you so many pre presets and you can see there's basically all these great engineers came up with presets for your channels and um, it's really a great way to um, unify and um, tune up and add so much saturation, EQ, and compression, whatever you need for your channels. Now, in this case, uh, I do a lot of strings, so I have a preset that kind of smooths out string sounds. And so that's on my uh, session bus and also a reverb and a small space that takes all of the instruments that were recorded in different spaces with different reverbs from around the world and kind of unifies them going through the bus to this space which makes them all sound more cohesive and not scattered so much in all these different spaces so to speak and uh, rooms so it's a great way to just put that on a bus and unify your sketching instruments. Um, if you were mixing down to an actual recording, like say you created a beautiful sketch and then you want to turn it into a full-blown song, then you would have other concerns about uh, reverb and your final um, session bus too. You would, you would want to mix in a way that makes sense for mixing all these different instruments. These two are specifically just for a sketching or what I call session bus, which just quickly unifies the space and tunes up the channel to whatever you need in a, just a quick way. So that is the session bus track, uh, just a way to make all of your instruments kind of sing together basically. Next up is the tempo track, which I've spoken about a few times. And it's literally there to remind me to use a tempo track. Um, sometimes even in sketching that can be handy. But mainly this track would be used for a finished product when you're creating a full song where you want to have ramps and build ups, um, just like an animator who's animating cartoons and there's um, you want to use ease in and ease out on your different uh, control points. And um, 
The same thing in music. There are times when you want the music to swell using time, and sometimes you want it to uh, accelerate and decelerate in, in time. And those all have certain terms they use for music also. But um, it's, it's there to remind me to use tempo as a track uh, when you're creating a finished product. And sometimes even in sketching, you can create some special effects using your tempo track. Um, really effective tool when it's time to finish a, finish a track into a song. Um, really, it's to miss this step means that you've kind of done your track a disservice because uh, the final touches of adding a little variation in speed and those accelerations and de-accelerations de in uh, tempo add a lot to your final track. Next up is any tracks that uh, act as kind of utility tracks uh, that help you do certain things you may need for sketching quickly. So in this case, I've got Insta Composer uh, just set up so that reminds me that in case I ever need certain MIDI generated quickly according to a certain chord progression or certain rules, I can use something like Insta Composer to just drag and drop it into my session. So uh, really what this track represents here is any utility software or VSTs or apps that will help you uh, sketch quickly. And if you keep them in your base uh, template, you won't forget about them. Next up, we have the Arranger track. And um, the Arranger track can do several things. Um, it can obviously give you a way to visualize your different sections of your song, which you could call verse, chorus, and bridge, endings, intros. And I've found, though, that instead of kind of uh, boxing me in with uh, pre-thought uh, of ideas of chorus and verse. I just went to section one, section two, section three, section four, five, six, and it allows me to just keep uh, control visually of my different song ideas. And uh, again, I'll just call them section one, two, or three. And then when I'm ready, I'll title them, you know, a verse, a chorus, a bridge, ending, or whatever. But at this stage, um, they're just known as sections, and I like to have several that I can just re-scale their size and have them ready to go so I can just drag them wherever I need anytime. So these are already pre-titled, and to title them, you just select it, and up here you can, up in this section here, you can just title it anything you want. So that is how I use the Arranger track. Um, there are other things you can do with it. It um, can arrange how you have your section played back. And so it can be handy and it's worth looking at, but definitely have that in your template as it just visually gives you a great way to keep everything organized. Next, we have the chord track. Um, really a no-brainer uh, for Cubase. Um, it just allows you to keep everything organized from a chord uh, perspective. And uh, I'll go into detail as I've in the past so many times, but when you do work out a sketch and you decide what your chord progressions are going to be, and you can have a chord progression for every different section as I do here, um, you can simply grab the MIDI that uh, you may have different chords on and you can tell Cubase I turn that into a chord track. So take all these chords here and just instantly put those on the chord track. It's uh, really just a matter of going to project, chord track, create chord symbols, and we've talked about that before. But um, it's really the best part about it is not just visually showing you where everything is, but of course, if you have a chord track and in this case, if I'm editing some MIDI, and if you use the chord track in this slot here, it will, as I've stated so many times, keep you in your scale, and it will keep you in the chord. So you, um, it will keep you in the notes of your chord so that you don't stray when you're editing if uh, you need help with that. So, and um, I, I would say just for 
being able to work so quickly, it's so handy because it tells you what's in the scale. It tells you what's exactly what notes are in that chord. And it tells you where not to go. But of course, um, these are suggestions. And there are times when you do want notes that are out of scale and out of the chord note. So, but it's just visually so handy. Um, just really a no-brainer at this point. Uh, if you're going to decide what chords you're going to use for your sketching, which you will, more than likely, simply grab that and project, create a chord track out of it. And when you're editing all the notes for all your tracks, you have this beautiful color guide to help you. That simple. The next track is something I call Live Pianos, and that's a folder. And if I open that up, I've got my favorite pianos in there and a scaler set up to help me play those pianos in a scale. And um, yeah, it works really well. So I'll have them both connected to a scaler set up to a certain scale. And it allows me to play live and just uh, really get some nice chord progressions. And I really enjoy that. So. So that's my live piano uh, folder. Very handy because even just setting up the pianos the way you like it, having each piano tweaked with just the right amount of reverb, and uh, that can take time. And so if you do it once and you save those uh, instruments in a folder, you can also have them pre-set up to be played by Scalar or at least have the notes filtered in a scale to help you play. Very handy, very enjoyable, and I finally set it up all the way I like it, and it's saved as my presets, so I literally just turn them on and start to play. Very handy. Now the next track is also a folder track, and almost they're all folder tracks from now on, except for these two MIDI tracks at the bottom. But if I open that up, you see that I have all these remedies set up in a way that uh, when I use my RTS system, which is nothing more than um, a really big MIDI file containing one really big, uh, let's say, song idea or scale idea. Um, so I can load it up really quickly and I know that all my remedies are set up for every specific instrument. So uh, really, uh, on days where I don't want to sketch, but I, I want to use a predetermined idea that I've created beforehand in an, what I call the RTS system, I'll just uh, turn these remedies on, whichever ones that I need for the day, and it's all preloaded with whatever song idea I've already created. So, uh, in essence, it's just a way to um, work with ideas that I've already created. And that um, you don't have to worry about CPU usage because uh, by default they're all turned off, which doesn't affect the CPU at all. And um, I can just turn on whatever I need at any moment. So really handy to have that pre-set up for the times when I want to work with uh, ideas that I've already created. So the next track is a folder track also. I call it the RTSS Instruments track. It's all my sketching instruments all in one folder, and they're all pre-set up so that the notes are filtered not to trigger any um, key switches uh, when I don't want them triggered by MIDI notes, which I've talked about quite a bit. So it's um, a folder. If I open it up, you can keep all your instruments in there, um, set them up. And uh, some of these instruments are, there's multiple variations of the same instrument. So it seems like a lot, but it's really every instrument that I like to use set up pre-filtered and um, also set up that the input is the input I like to use with it. By that, I mean, there are certain instruments that I may want uh, Remedy to control, certain in instruments that I like Scalar to control and certain instruments that just are played live by MIDI. And, but 
The most important thing is that they're set up the way you like to use the instrument with the um, articulations that you like filtered. And so why not just do that for every instrument once? And all you have to do is click on an instrument. So if I pick one here, say VSL Press, all you just click on it and you hit your hot key to make it active. And within a couple seconds, just like there, it's active and it's active with all your settings that you may have set up on it. So uh, in this case, I don't have a MIDI modifier. It's just uh, made to play with notes. And uh, but it's really a handy way uh, to take to get rid of all the things that annoy you for every instrument you have. And they're all different. Do it once. Put them all in a folder. Turn them off because you can deactivate them, but they will retain all those settings. And that is a really interesting and powerful thing that Cubase allows you to do. It allows you to have hundreds of tracks pre-set up, filtered, with inputs and everything, turned off in a folder, and you start your project and your CPU is not overwhelmed. Really great thing to do. Now these Three next folder tracks are all my tracks I use with DivisiMate. So they're all the same instruments I have um, in my other folder track, say the instrument track, but they're set up to be used uh, with Divisi system. So all their inputs are um, DivisiMate inputs. So uh, I've gone over this in other videos, how you set up and use uh, DivisiMate. But why not set those up in folders all with the inputs set up and all ready to go according to their template. And um, why not have longs, a version here of longs, have a version here of the shorts. So same thing, but these are all short articulations. Same channels, same instruments, but I have switched the articulation to shorts so that I can work with just, uh, you know, very fast and uh, rhythmic uh, ideas using this folder. And if I want to do some experimental, I've got the same instruments, but different, uh, more uh, experimental articulations on this folder. So again, since it's not costing you anything CPU wise, and all you can literally just select all of these and then hit your hotkey to activate them and they will all activate. You don't have to do each one separate. So just select them all, hit your activation hotkey. It takes longer because you're literally turning on, you know, thousands of samples and all these different instruments, but you can just go and grab some water or whatever. But even this would only take maybe 30 seconds to, for them to all open up. So a very handy way, again, to have everything controlled in folders and never have to do everything twice. So that is those three folders. Now these next green folders here are um, folders of strings and different string libraries that use Divisi or a form of it. And if you open them up, uh, the special edition doesn't use Divisi, but you can have the folder where you have violins one, two, and viola, cellos, and uh, double bass all on separate tracks so that you can control the MIDI better. So it, it's not just having a tutti uh, string. You're having them divided on separate tracks and easier to control. You get a better sound and it lets you edit things easier. And now in the case of the new Sono uh, orchestral strings, they have, and you heard in my demo a little earlier, um, some of the strings you heard were the new uh, Divisi Sono Orchestra uh, Divisi strings. And again, I put them in a folder so that I can control each one, each part of the string set up separately. And I altered the MIDI on every track and it allows you really great control and uh, to um, get a great sound going. And I did the same thing with the uh, Sono Kinetics uh, Sardino strings or muted strings. And uh, by the way, I got that totally free and I hope um, 
uh, you know, some of you were able to also get, they gave away 1,500 free versions of their new muted strings, which sound really beautiful. So that is in its own folder. Now the next folder is something I'm calling BB Audio, meaning band in the box. Um, the band in the box are, keeps growing, and I really, um, if you remember it as kind of a, you know, toy or a, a system like the old Jammer or one of these apps is just made for fun and not to be taken seriously. The, the new band in the box is crazy powerful because, and I've said this before, they literally take the best session players for instruments around the world, record that, and kind of like make phrases out of those recordings if you want a, something to compare it. Just like you can take a phrase in Sonokinetic and you can change the different chords and the timing and but these are even more flexible because you can use any time signature and tempo and any chord and uh, you can mix them endlessly with I think now they have thousands of recordings of some of the best people in the industry and really to think of band in a box as a toy at this point is just uh, really you're doing yourself a disservice because it's a very powerful uh, tool it is getting expensive if you get the full library and you keep updating it's become a very expensive tool but um, it is what it is it's some of the best recordings in the world and if you want a live guitar um, or some instrument that you find very hard to program in MIDI you know band in a box will have a solution so I have a uh, folder set up where um, I can I have the application here the plugin for it and then um, I also keep in this folder any audio tracks that I do create using this or whatever uh, chord progression that you come up with because all these chords you can put into band in a box and say now create a beautiful live guitar acoustic guitar uh, solo to go with these chords and I've shown this before and I'll be doing more videos on this but this folder is all set up to take that audio that has been created with these chords and keep it all buttoned up in that folder so that's my BB audio folder and we're getting close to the end here uh, the Divisi loopback folder right here um, there's three Divisi loopback channels, and um, again, I've mentioned how to do this before, but you can have more than one loopback channel, and it allows you to do interesting things like send, um, use longs and shorts in your, in your sketching at the same time while all hooked up to Divisi Mate. So this is like a little specialty little item. If you do use Divisi Mate, you can keep all your loopbacks in one little folder. So. And uh, we might as well now talk about the uh, folder here, which is Scalar's, what I call Scalar Live Sketch. And um, if I open up one of the scalars here, I have a scalar set up with a system where I'll be getting into more detail, but um, really, uh, Scalar has grown to the point where you can use it as a sketch pad. You can have different scalars controlling different instruments and you can sync them all together. And not only that, but um, I've been exploring the pad system and the edit system. And it has taken my sketching ideas to the next level um, because with the uh, addition of the suggestion button, you can come up, you can start with one chord that is voiced just the way you like it. So not just a triad, but you can add harmonies to that. And then when you get the first chord the way you like it, in the scale you like it, then you hit the suggest button and it will give you comparable chords that are tailored just like you voiced your first chord and this is a, a really I hope uh, not overlooked feature because it is 
powerful in the fact that set up and voice your first chord just the way you like it. Hit the suggest button and you'll have all the different suggestions tonally and in the scale all voiced in a similar way. And that's big. A big time saver. And that's how I do it now. So you can do that and it will give you those suggestions. And you can have, you can go to your pad where you can say, okay, these are all my chords now that were suggested that I liked. I dragged them into section one. Then I created section two and I have even more chord ideas for maybe a verse or a chorus or section two and then section three. All from those main chord ideas, all voiced in a similar way. Really a great way to work. And then from there, you can say, well, if you select um, all, if you take your lasso and select all of these and have this set up to play on this button, it will play these chords and then it will go down and play these chords and then it'll go down and play those chords all in one play session. So, and you can loop that. So just remember, whatever you select here, um, and then if you want to deselect this row, you could just say unselect these patterns. So if you're wondering how to play all these different sections, just lasso these buttons and then set up your loop points. So what I'm discovering is that it's really a great and deep system now to create not only chords, but sections of chords, different ideas, and to have them all suggested in the particular voicing that you like. Really great. So then I'll do the same thing with uh, how I like to set up my sonokinetic chords. I've got one just for that. So if I open that, I've got it set up so that I take these chords here. And because, again, the beauty of the system is you can have five different scalers open. Pick your initial chord ideas to your voicing. And then hit this button here and say sync all five. So now all my different versions, my melody, my rhythm, my bass, and my sono versions, all get these original chords. And they all appear here in my sono scaler, or my rhythm scaler, or my melody scaler. And then I can edit these chords simply by selecting one and holding down shift immediately takes me to the note editor for that chord and I can move them where they need to be for uh, using Sono products or for doing a lead or for adding or taking away from a chord, adding harmonies. Off the charts as far as how fast you can work and um, really a great system. So. I'll get into more details as I create some of these sketches from uh, scratch using this system where you have multiple scalers and using their pad system, edit system, and syncing system. Excellent way to work. And so that is my scalar folder. And so the last two tracks here are simply just generic MIDI tracks where they're just meant to be holders for anything I drag out of any of my scalers. So if I lasso these chords, drag them out, which I have here, I have pre-set up uh, MIDI tracks to take that MIDI. And then I can take this MIDI that has been dragged out and I can drag it right into Easy Keys or Easy Bass, or I can edit that really quick using of course, the color system, which is all set up for your chord progression. And you can edit every note separately. So that is my template, and I'm really enjoying this. Um, never before have I looked forward to opening Cubase and just creating. It, the workflow for me has really taken this for, for my enjoyment to the next level. Can't say enough uh, about you know doing the work setting things up, save the project, make a backup, opening it up, and instantly creating music. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you are able to make music wherever you're out in the world today, and we'll see you on the next video.